Hi everyone. It's me, Sharon. I'm standing in front of my house across the street. I thought I would invite you into my home and show you how I make that chocolate cake. The roses are just starting to come out. My husband trims them back every year and at Christmas time and they really enjoy that, I think. So let's get started. I'll put on my apron and I'll show you how to make this cake. There's a couple of things that we need to do in preparation for it. I find it's always best to line the cake pan first and also you have to crack all those eggs because you only need let me see you need eight egg yolks and four whole eggs and so you do have a lot of egg whites left over and that's what I use to make financiers but I want to also say that this cake is not my recipe it's from Shirley O'Corriher this is my favorite cookbook Shirley Okorahers Bakewise. She, this is her second book, and her first book was Cookwise, and she won the James Beard Award for that book, and then this is her second book, and she won the James Beard Award for that book also. That's like winning the Academy Awards twice for your only two performances in the world. Anyway, it's a wonderful book. This is my mise en place. That's French for everything in place. And it's what is highly recommended that a baker does before starting a project to make sure you don't leave out any ingredients. So in the back row, I have 926 grams of sugar, 436 grams of flour, 138 grams of black cocoa, 12 eggs, a quarter cup of buttermilk, two teaspoons of clear vanilla, a cup and a half of canola oil, two teaspoons of baking soda, and a teaspoon and a half of pink Himalayan salt. So I have transferred the sugar and the black cocoa and the salt and the baking soda to a pot, and we're going to heat the water and add two cups of boiling water to this mixture of black cocoa and sugar and salt and baking soda. Okay, I'll be right back. So I'll show you how, what I do with the eggs. I always have a container of egg whites like this in the refrigerator. When I get to a certain weight, then I make the financiers. So. I just crack the eggs and separate the white from the yellow and put the yellow in one bowl and then I pour the white into my main bowl. And I just keep doing this until I have eight egg yolks and then the last four just I dump in. This is how um, Julia Child always wore her apron with a, a cloth stuck in the waistband. And then um, after you get the eggs separated and get what you need for the cake, you pour in the quarter cup of uh, buttermilk into the eggs. And put my egg white stash back into the refrigerator. Use a little egg beater. Okay, so that's ready. Probably not a good idea to wear black when you're working with flour. <laughs> okay, this is my Hungarian flour sifter. And I also added um, the vanilla to the oil. Now I'm going to get my stand mixer out. Okay, and it sounds like 
our water is just about ready to be added to the mixture. Okay. So I'm gonna <clears throat> pour my first cup of water. And she says that to do it slowly. So we're just gonna add it and stir with a small whisk. And once I get all of the first cup uh, mixed in, then I'm going to turn the heat on because you want to bring the chocolate up in heat just under a boil. It doesn't actually boil, it's sort of what I like to say, it blooms. You'll see it rises up, it kind of like gets big. And that's when you know it's, it's time to stop and let it rest for 10 minutes. After it, after it gets to that point, that temperature, then you let it rest for 10 minutes. And that's when I usually, <clears throat> I use that time to um, prepare my pan. And it's just sort of like a thick chocolatey sludge. This is a very, actually a very thin batter. You'll see when we get it all made. It's not like a regular cake batter. So now, now I'm going to turn the heat on under this pot and add the last cup of boiling water. One of the reasons <clears throat> that that book is, I think, such a good book is because Shirley O'Corraher is a chemist, and so she understands why things happen in baking. And when I was in the baking club, uh, the very first meeting that we had, Shirley was the author that came to the meeting, and we all baked something out of her book. I didn't know about the chocolate cake at that point. I made something else, I can't remember what I made. But um, she's, she's the one really that inspired me to, uh, to bake more. And she said at that first meeting that Julia Child used to call her and say, okay, I did this, this, and this, and I got this result. What did I do wrong? And she would tell her the chemical reason why it didn't work out. So she's, she was just a very interesting lady to listen to. And that was, I think, in, um, I think that was in 2011 or 12. And um, she was, I think, 82 at the time. So I don't know, I, I think she's still alive. She lives in Atlanta and she's just wonderful. Okay, it's still <clears throat> heating up, but I'm going to stop recording now because I want to take the phone off the stand and I want to show you what it looks like when it blooms. Okay, so I'm going to pour the oil into the mixing bowl, and the oil has the vanilla in it, remember that. It helps mix it better if you pour it in first, because oil wants to sit on the top. Then you pour the uh, chocolate mixture. And make sure you get all of that wonderful chocolate out of the pan and you put this pan aside because there's another step that we use the pan for before we put the cake batter into the pan. So I'm going to put this on my pan mixer and add the guard. And one of the things I learned was to keep, oh whoops, to keep the mixture from sloshing out, um, it's good to put a tea towel over all of it so it doesn't slash, slosh out there. Okay, 
Okay, we're gonna do this from a little bit different angle so you can see better, but you want the, um, the oil and the chocolate batter to mix for about 10 seconds. And then you start adding the flour. And this is how I do it. And I don't know that this is the best way, but I, I have sifted it onto some parchment paper. And I just put it in like this. Then it's good to stop and scrape down the ball and the uh, the beater bar. Get all the chalk or the um, flour off of the beater. Also, it has a tendency to kind of clump up. And as soon as it starts coming together and looks like a thick batter, that's when you add the eggs. Okay, so here's, well, I'll bring it over here. Here's the other step that I was telling you we use the pan for. You wanna get a sieve. Put it over the pan. This uh, ensures that you don't have any little lumps of, I don't know, cocoa or flour. It just seems to make a smoother batter. Okay, I have my oven heating up to 350. I'm gonna pour this beautiful mixture into this pan. I never get tired of making this cake. I know it by heart now. Okay, so it's ready to go into the oven. After the cake is cooled, I stab it a bunch of times with um, a very sharp fork. And this is in preparation for the Grand Marnier soaking solution, which is up next. The recipe for the soaking solution is a cup of sugar and a cup of water. You bring those together and dissolve the sugar in the water and bring it to a boiling temperature. And then this is what you pour over the cake. And it has to be at a boiling temperature in order to have that chemical reaction with the, uh, with the cocoa, apparently. Next up is the ganache, and the recipe for the ganache is one and a half cup of heavy whipping cream and a half a cup of sugar. Keep stirring this together and bring it slowly to a simmer. After the mixture has been simmering for a minute, you turn it off and then you add two tablespoons of Cairo syrup. And this is what makes the ganache real shiny on top of the cake. So you just mix that in. And then you take one pound of Belgian chocolate. Now my chocolate has comes in these little um, pellets, which is nice. You don't have to break it up. So you just pour that in and shake it just a little bit to make sure they all submerge under the liquid. And then you remove it actually from the heat, make sure that's all turned off. And then you set the, temp the uh, timer for five minutes. You want it to sit and rest um, and start melting. And we'll be right back. Okay, it's been five minutes now, and I'm gonna see if I can um, stir and videotape this all at the same time. When you first start stirring it, it you know it's, it look doesn't look real good, and it doesn't look like it's ever really gonna come together. But 
I'm gonna speed this up when I'm editing it so you can see better how it happens. And I like to let it cool down so that it's a little thicker when I spread it over the cake. And that's it. So this is the finished product. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I've sure enjoyed making it for you. And I'll be posting the recipe in my newsletter. So thanks for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>